Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm Georg Koltzmann from Alphonic. Mm, we are a company here in Graz and worked with the Technical University of Graz quite some time on audio processing of lecture recordings. And uh, I want to show you a bit how uh, what we can do or what we are doing and how this can be integrated in OpenCast. Uh, can you see my slides now? Yes, I guess. Okay, perfect. Yes, we can see your slides. Thank you. So, yeah. Although, sorry for the interruption, you might want to make them full screen to make it easier to read. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, what, we are, what are we doing? Uh, basically, we, we try to automate all the audio post-processing steps. So our, our service is a web service. We also have desktop version, but the service I'm speaking about now is a web service. So basically you can upload audio or video files to our, our servers, then all these files are analyzed. So we uh, detect different speakers or music sections or background sections. And uh, the most important part of our system or one of the most important part is the leveler so it will detect where are different speakers or where are just background parts then uh, we will try to, to bring speaker parts on a similar loudness and uh, adjust music parts accordingly accordingly which is not so important for lectures maybe and also not to raise back the, the level of background noises uh, like writing on a blackboard and and things like that then we do filtering and audio restoration, like noise reduction and a few other things. And at the end, we combine the audio again to do some final loudness normalization. And then we have different services as well, like encoding into different output formats or content deployment to different services. So uh, which audio algorithms do we have? So as I already told before, we have a leveler which which analyzes the audio and uh, uh, then adjusts the levels and also compressor settings and, and all these things so basically it, it tries to automate the audio engineer like the audio engineer is doing it with faders we, we do it uh, with our algorithms and if there if there are background noises these are classified and not raised and and uh, in, in music parts we have to treat the levels differently, of course, because music needs much more inner dynamics compared to speech. Uh, you, you can ask detailed question afterwards to each algorithm because uh, otherwise it would be quite long here. Uh, loudness normalization, this means there are, there are standards for broadcasts like DBOR 128 and also uh, similar um, recommendations for mobile this is usually uh, given in an LUFS value. So this means that by average, all productions or all lecture recordings have a similar loudness so that uh, the listeners don't have to adjust the volume control all the time. Audio restoration. This is automatic noise and hum reduction, filtering of disturbing low frequencies. So here it works similar. We first analyze the audio and detect there are different background noise scenarios. Then we uh, automatically mm, detect noise prints in these background noise scenarios and uh, do the noise reduction automatically so that uh, it's not necessary to do that by hand and adjust it to changing noises. We have also other algorithms like multi-track algorithms where you can give multiple input tracks to our system. So multiple files for each speaker, for example, and for, for, for a music track or other tracks. And then we can, of course, do much more uh, sophisticated things, which is maybe not so uh, relevant for lecture recordings. And we also integrated various speech recognition services. Uh, these are external services. so we did not uh, develop the speech recognition ourselves, but we do some pre and post processing uh, to them. So, so far we integrated the Google Cloud Speech API or Amazon with the AI. This is by Facebook and also Speechmatics. And in addition to that, 
the encoding metadata and content deployment features. So we encode different audio and video file formats, of course, and map the metadata between formats so that this should work on, on different formats. Also for chapter marks and enhanced podcasts, which is uh, usually not that easy. We also have video workflows, so you can, have, of course, also input video files. Then we just um, process the audio and then um, combine it with the, with the video afterwards again. Or we can create a video for, for audio-only files with images or also generate a waveform so that the listeners can see that there is something going on, which is popular for podcasts, for example. And automatic content deployment. So we have various, we integrated various other APIs and services so that you can put your result files to, to other servers and also get your input files from other servers. So basically all the standard file transfer servers like Dropbox, SFTP, Google Drive, uh, Amazon S3, and also special video and podcasting hosting services. Of course, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Podbean, Buzzsprout, and so on. So now I want just to show you a short demo of our system. So here, this is how our web service looks like. So you can just create a production. We call it production and an audio processing job. So this is a single track production. So there is just one input file. Then you can also select automatic intros and outros and, and save all the settings and presets so that when you create a new production, you only have to apply your preset. For example, a background image, just take some BP Langstrom. And then you can uh, add various output formats. Oop, my browser is hanging, I guess. Yeah. Unfortunately, full screen on my Linux box here has some problems. Okay, unfortunately, my, my screen is freezing. Can you still hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I will just continue uh, and uh, without my slides. So yeah, this is basically our system. You can now just start and this will be processed in our servers and then you can get back the file and see the anal analysis results. You can just uh, try it out for yourself if you want. And so now about the OpenCast uh, integration. Uh, we have an API, a, a REST API, which can be integrated in other systems. And uh, this is, of course, also possible for OpenCast. And so basically, our simple API is quite simple. So you just can select a preset, and the preset is, is, is basically uh, a list of all your settings. And then you just take a new audio or video file and apply the preset, and you are done. This is just one, one call, one HTTP call. And we also have a complex API where you can set all the details with, with JSON-based uh, settings. And um, for example, the university here at Graz, they are just using our API in, in a custom script in OpenCast. So to, to process the other files, so they they only send the audio files to, to our service. So in their video recordings, they um, get out the audio, then process it, and then combine it again with the video to, to store some bandwidth. You could, of course, also do it with video. And yeah, we are also uh, doing a, a complete OpenCast integration so and, and a separate OpenCast module in, in near future together with the Technical University of Graz. So then you don't have to use the API and it should be much easier. So for those who are interested, we also have some other examples on, on our site. Uh, I, I have the link here, but I cannot show you the slides, unfortunately. But you can just go on our website, aphonic.com, and there you will find the other examples immediately to get an idea of what, what our algorithms are doing. And 
Yeah, basically that's it. Thanks for your uh, for your attention. And if you have any questions about our algorithms or how our service is working, please just let me know. Unfortunately, I cannot see anything, but I can hear you. Thank you very much for your presentation. There indeed are already some questions. I'm not sure about what you can see, what you cannot see. Can you access the shared notes currently or not? No, I cannot see anything, unfortunately, because this is a bug okay. in my browser. It is often freezing in full screen, and I just don't want to to uh, reboot the computer now. So I can just okay. see you. Then I just read the questions to you. That would be great. How does the integration in Opencast work? Is there a workflow operation handler to send the files to you? I mean, you already said something about an Opencast module. Maybe you can expand a bit on that. Yes, so far, uh, so far, I mean, I did not implement this integration, but as far as I know, there is a possibility to just run custom scripts in, in Opencast. Uh, and there you can, of course, just, just use Cool which does a request to our server and, and that's it basically. But as I've said before, uh, we will we will do a custom module, an, an open cast module, then uh, you can just use it as, as all the other modules or to be able to use it as all the other modules. That sounds good. The next question is, is there an on-premise version of that service? Uh, you mean a, a local version to run on your own server, I guess? Uh, yes, I probably want to run your server, your service on their own service. Yes. Uh, no, not so far, but maybe we are doing this in the near future. The next question is, how much does the service cost? Yes, uh, it is a freemium service, so it is free for we started in the podcasting space, so this free for two hours of audio processing per month for so that uh, smaller podcasters can just use it for free. And then we have just additional packages. So our pricing is based on hours of processing you do. So for example, if you need uh, 20 hours per month, you can just uh, use a 25 hour, hour package or there's also the possibility to uh, purchase one-time credits, uh, which is no subscription, just a one-time purchase. And, and the cost is, it depends on how big your package is, of course, it is between uh, 0 0.7 to 1.5 euros per hour. Okay, thank you very much. And we have time for one more question. And there's also one left, so it's quite fitting. Is the speech recognition automatically activated? No, it's not automatically activated. You have to just uh, connect with with whatever service you prefer. So for example, Google, Amazon, VTI, or Speechmatics, and then you can just use it. So we do some pre-processing. So we segment the audio before, so the individual speakers and remove music parts and, and pauses and things like that, and then join the segments uh, back together.